What's up guys? Today we actually have a very interesting deck and now I know I haven't uploaded in a little while but I just came back from the World Championships where I competed. Unfortunately it didn't do very well. However, uh, I wanted to cover all the cool decks that I found and that I have the cards for that I can show you guys all. And if you have any requests for decks that you want to see, just uh, message me and I'll try to make it happen. Unfortunately the rotation is happens tomorrow but I can still probably showcase the decks and I'll, f I'll figure it out. Uh, but today we actually can look at the Vespuquin Toolbox kind of deck that Ross Cawthon piloted to fourth place. Now Ross Cawthon is an amazing player. He's gotten a lot of really great results. Two time worlds runner up and always comes up with really cool rogue decks and this is probably kind of one of them. So a little side note that's interesting is that uh, Puka, one of the commentators and someone who's contributed to the Pokemon community for a while, actually tweeted out um, a, de a deck that he said w would be like a Nani X deck that can beat everything in the meta right now. And it's actually pretty almost similar to this. Um, it had some Zoroark and some other things. I just thought that was kind of interesting. So this deck revolves around the Vespaquin card with the attack Beer Revenge, which does 20 plus 10 damage for each Pokemon in your discard pile. And it, this is good because it does a lot of damage and it's also stage 1 and so you can and you take one prize so you can apply a lot of pressure that's really effective. Um, so th one thing you'll notice about this deck is it has a very low EX count. You play one Shaman just to get you out of sticky situations and one Malamar EX. This card's actually really interesting. Um, I'm trying to figure out like what the, the best use for this card was for uh, Ross and why he might have played it in. Sometimes when you're playing um, against other decks, you, you might need an extra turn, so you, you use this to lock them. And also something, I, another use I've found for it is if you attack with Vespaquin and they can't return knock you out, sometimes it's kind of difficult to do like 200 damage or a lot of damage, especially because you don't really want to discard a lot of things. So you can hyper hypnosis, uh, hope they don't fall asleep, hope they stay asleep, and then you can um, attack another time. Another thing you can do is you can actually like load energy on, on and uh, onto the Malamar and use Maximar, uh, and you can do that through Revolthal, which has the attack Oblivion Wing for 30 damage and attach one uh, Darkness Energy from the discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. So through all these Pokemon, you have four Unknown as well for more draw power and a 2-2 two -two Auxiliary line. Uh, once you can turn draw until you have five cards, so every turn you have a consistent draw, making sure you don't whiff anything. And one Dredagon does revenge 20 plus 70 uh, if your opponent, if your Pokemon was knocked out last turn. So through all these Pokemon, you do a lot of damage. And the, the way I see it, you don't really need to attack with Vespican super early. What you're going to want to do is you're going to put on some pressure with uh, Eotal and a little bit of pressure with Dredagon. And just to set up completely and then you kind of roll over them with, uh, with Beer Revenge. As your last attack, and you play a f you play a two muscle band just to speed this process up, help you do more pr damage, because sometimes the deck kind of struggles with doing enough damage. So 20 damage extra is very useful. You play four battle commissers to get all the Pokemon you want in the discard pile. One revitalizer. This is really good just to get your Vespaquin back and all the resources you might need. So an extra one one Vespaquin nine is good just so you can discard some Vespaquin combis at the beginning. Uh, to to help accelerate beer range's damage, but you can also get the Pokemon back when you need them, right? Uh, you play one special charge. This is like this deck is really really high on energy counts, right? You play four DC and five darkness energy, and so the darkness energy is make sure you always have enough energy, and the special charge just makes sure you never run out of DC. So this deck helps you get ar around a lot of things, like if Garantina comes. Uh, you guys notice that we don't have a Pokemon Ranger. You don't really need it because you have Yveltal and Darkness Energy to accelerate uh, basic energy. You play 4 Ultra Ball. This helps you search your deck for all the, di the weird different Pokemon you need. As well, um, it helps you thin out your hand for Abyssal Hand so you can draw more cards. This is deck tries to rely as little on Shaman as it can just to if you need a shaman, if you desperately need to draw cards to get yourself out of a pickle, sure you have one shaman just to help you get out of that. But it relies on it's it's like it's like I want to use Octillery most of the time, but if I need a shaman, I will use it. 
It plays four VS Seeker. This this deck needs a lot of supporters to help it keep going. The supporters are really important. All the counts are really good. Uh, you play one AZ. This helps if your Vespican's asleep or something's or in damage or they they bring up a Pokemon like um, Malamar or something with a high retreat like Octillery as well. You can just you can just press uh, use AZ even if you're under item lock, and that helps a lot. And then this is like one of the, my favorite cards in this deck. You play one Bridget. I kind of wish he played more, but I can understand why he only played one. Bridget is really good. What it does is it search your deck for one basic EX Pokemon or three uh, basic Pokemon. The only time you're going to want to use it for the EX is Malamar, maybe late game. But ideally, what you're going to want to do is get the basic Pokemon. And that means that turn one, you get one Combi, one Remoraid, or one. You usually want to get one Remoraid, but you can also. And then you can mix it up between getting some Evil Tall. You can get Dragon. You can start setting up your uh, Vespigum with by getting a Combi. You can get Unknown to accelerate your turn more, and so this basically just gives you a ton of options, which is really really nice. So Bridget is good, and also especially because you have four Battle Buster and four VS Seeker, you could just search your deck for it, really turn one, and put it into the discard pile, and then VS Seeker for it. So. It's it's a dead card basically late game, but that's why you have Battle Master and VS Seeker, and that's why I understand that he didn't play more of them. One Hex Maniac, uh, just to get rid of Vile Plume's abilities and other things like that. It really helps in Greninja's um, ability as well. That's how he beat a Greninja uh, deck in top eight. So Hex Maniac just good. It it can also put your opponent into a bad position if you Hex Maniac them turn one. And as you guys can see, the sex full of a ton of uh, Sage ones and so sometimes you're gonna want if you go second you're gonna want to attack with evil tell most likely but if you go first you're like uh I start with all my stuff I got everything I need going and sometimes you don't even need like you can just also offer a few things like evil tall or remory and maybe a combi and then you're good to go you don't really need um you don't need more than that so you can just hex maniac from there so two Lysander two Lysander is really good in the sec get some Pokemon that have lower HP so you can knock them out like the Shamans and the things because you don't really care what they knock out or if you knock out their attackers as long as you can keep getting pri two prizes and like I said this deck has some troubles doing a lot of damage so just being able to get the lower damage HP Pokemon and knocking them out is really nice you play 2N this is good against Night Marsh and and a lot of things because you put them to onto a low hand size, you knock out their Pokemon, and they're like, "Oh, what do I do? What can I do?" And so you just disrupt their hand to a low low size, and it doesn't really damage you at all because even if you end yourself to one, you have Octillery's Abyssal Hand to get yourself back to five cards. So Abyssal Hand like is your protection against N. They can't Hex Maniac you and end you in the same turn. So you're always gonna have like a, a sizable amount of cards in your hand, and if you keep some unknowns in the uh, on their bench. As well as a uh, artillery, this gives you so much protection against N that N isn't even a threat, and it makes it it takes out some of the weaknesses that Nightmare has, which makes it a really good contender. Uh, one teammates teammates is really good because it it just shows like all it gets you all the things that you need. Usually, I found that I don't really need that many things in this deck. I just need a, usually a DCE. I can get a VS Seeker for a support in the next turn, or I can get some a battle compressor for some more Pokemon in the discard pile or a muscle band. But in general, this deck is needs to play one kind of good supporter a turn. And teammates a lot of the time is the supporter that you want. It just helps you get the DCE consistently. Like you don't want to take to go Sycamore or an N and risk it. So teammates is really good. And then usually when you use teammates, your hand starts being low, like four cards, and then you can abyssal hand for some more resources that you might need later. I played two floatstone. He played two floatstone. This is to go on to uh, Octillery, Malamar, Evolthal, anything with like high retreat that you don't want in the active necessarily. Floatstone is interesting because w the way you play floatstone is that you don't you don't just put it down because you need to unless you have the sycamore or something. You hold it, right? You're gonna hold it as long as you can, and then once they lie under you, that that's when you play it. And this is so that you have protection against things like startling megaphone and Zerosic, because if you put a float on onto um your artillery, they can lie sander and the startling megaphone, 
and you're like, crap, I have to use a DCE or I have to find my AZ. And so if you just hold it in your hand or keep it in your deck, that just really protects you. Unless you're going against something like an item lock deck or something that they will lock it and not let you play it, you just hold it as long as you can. And Muscle Band, I already talked about this a little bit, but Muscle Band is really, really strong. And this is kind of how this deck has a really good Night March matchup, and that's one of the reasons it was played. You just, um, you can knock out the Joltix, you can knock out Pump Boost with Fighting Fury Belts, and you can just apply a lot of pressure. And they have EXs, and you don't. You're not going to really bench anything. So, and they're probably going to need one or two Shamans on their bench, most likely. And then you just play f 4 DCE and 5 Darkness Energy. Uh, Darkness Energy is really good. I, I skimmed over it a little bit, but it's good because you, you don't need... You're never really worried about running out of energy. That's kind of the least of your worries. And you can go through Jirachi, you can go through Garantina, and a lot of things just because you have the basic energy. And it makes it so that like you don't really worry when you have to disc discard energy. And a lot of times the way I play this deck is I, I, I throw away energy early game so I can use Oblivion Wing, and you can get them onto Malamar, or you can get them onto Vesequin. This is, that's really strong, that having using a few turns to Oblivion Wing, take, slow down Oblivion Wing, and onto a Combi, and that way you have a Vesquin, and then you didn't have to attach to it ever. And then you can use like another attacker, like a Malamar or something else, like a Dredagon, and save the the Vesquin. And so it kind of leaves like some attackers in the back without you having to use your attachment. That's another weakness of Night March, is that you have one attachment to return. And so when they end you, you have no options, but with this deck, you're, you're kind of keeping more energy on the board, and like it's it's kind of like like how John Hunt used to be. You can just take a turn and slow down an Oblivion Wing, and they it's a, it's a pretty big Pokemon. It has 130 HP, and also like sure they're gonna take one prize, but you're already you're getting an energy down. You're doing 30 more damage. We can lead into some some nice um Beer Revenge KOs, or if you have like a Muscle Band on this, you could do like a a revenge th with Juddergon. So it just gives you like a lot of good options. So overall, th this deck was very cleverly, cleverly crafted. I see some weaknesses and some possible kind of poor matchups, but the grass typing really helps a lot against like water decks, and it seems to have like pretty okay matchups along the board and does good against like non EXX as well as EXX. So I'll just show you guys a game after this quick cut. Thanks. I'll see you guys in a second. So we're going to play against Leche de Fresa with a grass colorless deck. So I'm going to call it going play. I'm going to call heads. And it looks like we're going to go first. I like going first with this deck and I think Ross does. I think this deck goes first because of the fact that you're a stage 1 deck so you're going to get set up a little bit later. And against Nightmarch, I'd like if I knew my opponent was playing Nightmarch, then I would go second so I can knock them out turn one with Evil Tall. However, I don't know that. Uh, this hand is kind of bad. Um, so I'm not gonna do very much. I'm gonna maybe drop this other Evil Tall. No, I think I'm just gonna take it slow and do nothing, and I'll just pass. Sometimes you, you get into these bad hands, but I'm just going to see if I can recover and maybe make something of this hand. I'm going to get end. Wow. It's very interesting that my opponent did that. He saw I had played no cards my entire turn, and he ended me. So uh, that was fortunate for me. And I got some stuff here, right? So I got two battle compressors, and I'm going to play the Shaman just because I need to, right? So this is why he plays Shaman. You don't want to, but sometimes you need to play it. He actually has Force of Giant Plants, which he's going to play. This is somewhat good for me. I mean, I don't really need it, but it's it's kind of nice if I get both the Combi and Vespaquin into play. So it looks like we're playing into a Superior deck, which is kind of interesting. With uh, Aerodos, he's going to be poisoned. And so, this is going to be... I, have, I don't think I've played against one of these decks before, so it's going to be an interesting matchup with a, against a non EX kind of deck. But again, I'm going to capitalize on his Shaman. Like, every Shaman he puts down, I'm gonna, I want to capitalize on and get the, get the Lysander going. Get a lot of pressure and damage on. 
And so even though I didn't need to do much turn one, like I'm, I'm fortunate he end. It's fortunate that he ended me, but I didn't really need to do or accomplish that much. Okay, I got lucky that he didn't paralyze me. It's very fortunate. He's gonna set up for two. Oh, he set up already once. So these two shamans are really, really good for me. Like I'm really happy that he put them down. I'm gonna be able to get like a lot of damage going. So. Okay, so he's gonna poison the sense me. I'm gonna start taking 10 damage per turn. That's alright. I can't knock this out right now. But I can. That's fine. I don't really need to. So let's see what I top deck. I top deck a Vesicon. Okay, so I'm gonna. Battle Compressor. I'm gonna get rid of Yuletal. Compi. And. I think an Octillery. And I'm gonna get rid of. I'm gonna do another battle compressor. Getting rid of an unknown. And then I'm gonna get rid of a supporter and an energy card, so that I can use Oblivion Wing to get it back. So that seems pretty good for me. That's kind of achieving what I want to do. And I think I'm gonna drop Malamar just because I need to draw more cards here. And also, stability won't be too terrible in this matchup so I can probably use it at some point. Okay. So this isn't bad. Um I have some of the things I wanted. I'm gonna Lysander I think I'm gonna play the unknown see what I grab. But I think I'm gonna most likely go into Lysander. Okay. So I get this. Yeah I'm gonna Lysander the Shaman I believe and I'm gonna Oblivion Wing onto my co uh, Vessel Queen, get a healthy uh, energy onto it, and so start powering it up. If I top deck another Darkness energy or something like that, I can get a Vessel Queen going. So Vessel Queen is really, it's really good that I, I had uh, discarded the Darkness energy, predicting that hopefully I would I'd draw one, another Darkness energy to use Oblivion Wing. So yeah, he can probably retreat it, that's fine with me, I don't, I don't really mind. And if I grab a DCE, I can actually uh, dra uh, use Dragon as revenge and knock him out. Okay, so he's gonna Professor Sycamore. Can he him a few things? Not nothing too harsh. Uh, it's good that he didn't end me. For him, like he shouldn't have ended me again. The first end was pretty questionable in the first place. I'm not really sure what this um, superior deck really tries to achieve and accomplish, but I I, I really don't know doesn't seem very strong but Servine's ability is pretty powerful but yeah I think it can knock me out here and it looks like I'm gonna be in top deck mode but there's a lot of options there's a lot of things I can possibly top deck I have unknowns I have Octillery I have Ultra Ball for things I have VS Seeker like I have tons of options here I have AZ for Shaman so I have a lot of things in my deck that I can top deck right now to possibly get what I need. And that's kind of the way I want it to be. And so even if it uh, deck starts drawing dead and is kind of a bad position like it is right now, it can it can get better. And oh yeah, I'm knocked out. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to hope that I can top deck something good here. Because if I don't, I'm in a bit of trouble. So let's see what I draw. Okay, I draw an Octillery. This is huge. So I can Abyssal Hand for four cards. That's a great top deck. And we get some things. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll play these two down. And then I'll drop an Energy. And because I had a Darkness Energy from Oblivion Wing last turn. I don't have to blow a DC anymore. I'm gonna end him down to five cards, which is what he has anyways. Um, and so now I'm gonna be able to apply a little bit more pressure. Um, okay, I can do 60 damage. I can do 80 damage. I can do 100 damage, which is not enough. And he's gonna be able to do. Um, coil for 100 damage next turn, this turn. So, I mean, I'm okay with that, that's fine. I'll just be revenge. 
for 100 dam for 80 damage. I don't need to do the 100. I'll save the muscle band for when I can knock something out. And I'll just I'll take that. That's fine. So I'm gonna see what I need to do uh, next turn. I can probably I probably use revenge, but I might be able, might want to use beer revenge. Uh, they have very similar names, which is pretty funny. But I have uh, I actually have revitalizer, so if I need to use another Vesquin line late game, I can do that. He's in Professor Sycamore, getting rid of um, a teammates. I think that yeah, that's a good decision. That's fine. He's in town now. I'm gonna see what he has in his prize cards. So these prize cards aren't too terrible. He has like half of a superior line in, in the discard pile. So I'm gonna promote my best Quinn just because it has for your retreat, so I can promote whatever I want after that. So okay. Hmm. I'm not sure what I want to do right here. He has another. He has another superior setup. So I'm gonna want to hold my my Vespa Queen for when I need it. So I'll just retreat into my Jordagon. And I mean, there's not very much I want to do here. I I Ultra Ball for a Yveltal, but I don't really want to discard anything. Um, yeah, actually, I don't mind doing that play. I'll Ultra Ball these two cards for a Yveltal. I mean, do I need a Yvothal? Yeah, it would be really nice. So I can um, attack with it next turn. And just slow the game. I, I'm trying to slow the pace of the game down. Because, like, that's that's kind of what I'm trying to do with this deck, is just slow the game down. Like, I don't want I don't want the prizes to be exchanged every turn. And I'm going to end him, because I don't I don't like how how much he has going right now. Yeah. Maybe that was a misplay. Maybe I should have Lysandered a uh, Shaman, but I think this is fine. I want him to get him to a little hand size. I don't like how he has so many cards in his hand, and I have a healthy six cards, anyways. So, and I can discard this uh, Remory next turn. Summon Revenge for do 90 damage, knock him out, and take a prize. So now he has less resources than he had before. I can uh, start. I'm gonna start Lysandering his Shamans, knocking them out. I don't like them there, anyways. And I can teammates revitalizer, like I can I can do a lot of stuff here, so I'm in a good spot, right? So I don't I don't think like he he's in a better spot than I am. I can he's he has a prize lead, but I'm gonna start live sending those shamans, knocking everything out, and putting him in, in fewer op in some few options. And I have uh four, five, seven Eight. So I need one more Pokemon, which I can achieve with the Remoraid, and to knock it out. I'm curious to see if he. I, th I think he does. He does doesn't knock me out this turn. So I'm gonna. I think I can have an AZ gone because I discarded, it, which is nice. So I can attack this turn. It's gonna end me. Oh, okay. I had a pretty good hand. That's fine. So. I can't, probably can't attack this turn. Hmm. Unless I get a VS Seeker, which I did. I hate the VS Seeker. I wouldn't really mind just azing the Vesp the Drodagon and then uh, attacking with Evil Tall again. So he's going to set up for 5, getting him in a healthy hand. I can, like, he has more EX down now. I have basically my game plan set for me. I can just knock out his Pokemon. I have one Lysander gone and one VS Seeker gone, so I have a lot of resources left. He's gonna get a Muscle Man onto here and just apply what, like 60 damage onto here? Yeah. Like nothing. Not, not even getting the knockout, which is pretty funny to me. So, I'm gonna attach a Muscle Band here. I mean. I don't even think I want to attach a muscle band. I want to keep my float zones available for my uh, for my Vespaquin, and also I want to keep my muscle bands available. For, 
I want to keep my float zones for my evil tall so I can retreat next turn. And I want to keep my muscle bands available for the high EX Pokemon like like um Sceptile. So I'm just gonna hold it. And yeah, so he didn't he didn't take his opportunity to kill me. So I have another 90 HP. I, I have a, a beefier attacker in uh, Dardagon, and I can attack. And the DCE being gone doesn't really matter to me. I don't really care about that. So I'm just gonna. I think I'll. I'm not gonna even drop it. I'll just hold it, and then I can Oblivion one. And hopefully, there's an energy in the discard pile. I'm not sure. And there is. That's good. That's really good. Uh. Let's check my discard pile. See how many DCs are gone. It's just one DC good. So I think I'm gonna start powering a Malamar as a potential attacker here, because I think I have three DCs left, so I don't really need more. And I have a lot of darkness energy gone anyway. So I have these are all my. I have I have one more darkness energy, so I don't really want to risk it hitting that and or having a darkness energy and a DCE on my Vesequin. So I'll just uh, put it onto Malamar so that I can attack with it later as a beefier attacker and once I have enough energy onto it it doesn't really matter he's gonna Lysander me um, he's gonna go onto the Malamar okay. I'm not sure what, what the purpose of this is really uh, I have floats on my deck, I have energy to retreat I have a lot of options here so this is not an intelligent play by my opponent, he's gonna slashing strike for what? For, wow okay never mind then I guess yeah, okay. I'm not sure how it did so much damage. Oh, okay. So he is coil and then he is slashing strike with a muscle man. Okay, that's fine. I mean, that works, sure. But I'm going to start ending him to a low hand size and putting him in with few options. Uh Okay, so he has 110 HP left, so actually I can actually use the Dirtagon. Attach a muscle band, attach a DC, and save the Vespin. I want to save the Vespin because I think it's really important. But then I can end. And so he has no attackers left. Uh and I have some good stuff left. So I'll um retreat into the Dirtagon. And I'll actually battle compressor away some a Remoraid, and uh, I don't think I need Unknowns anymore that much. Yeah, I don't really need Unknown. So I'll discard that. And so he's a low hand size. Hopefully he can set up another attacker this turn. If he does, I'm in a little bit of trouble. I'm not sure what, what just happened. Oh, he knocked my Pokemon out from Poison. Wow. Right, not from an attack. Okay. So that was a pretty bad misplay, but yeah, I think, I don't know, I might be able to still win this game. Yeah, I think I still can win this game. So even though that was a pretty bad misplay, I still think I can win this game just through playing smart and like making good plays. Um, okay, so I have two, four, five, nine. 10, 12 Pokemon in here. So I can't do quite enough damage just, just yet. But I can. Mm, I can still. I, I can't lie center this, but I can still uh, knock out the uh, superior. And I have a special charge left in my deck. So I'll drop this. And then I'll use Abyssal Hand for two. And okay, I have another DC. I can use the Dragon next turn, anyways. So I'll use Beer Wrench, knock it out. And yeah, I'm doing 140 damage now. So I'm in kind of a sticky situation. The misplay was kind of hurt me. But I still think I'm fine. Uh, okay. So here's another superior. Let's see if we can knock me out this turn. Hopefully this is nothing. His last card is nothing. If I if I knock out most of his Pokemon, I'm in a pretty good spot. Like if I if I be revenge and then hex, I'm in a pretty good spot right now. I'm just gonna hope he has nothing left. Like a, this is not a supporter. 
because if it is I'm in a lot of trouble but no it isn't he doesn't knock me out and I'm not sure why he doesn't poison me that would have been the knockout but I'm fortunate so I'm not going to complain hmm okay so I'm gonna I don't I think I have enough Pokemon for the knockout. 2, 4, 5, 9, 10, 12. Okay. So I do have enough Pokemon for the knockout. So I'm gonna thin my hand. Got two get two more um get a Vespa Queen out. Put the Vespa Queen out. And I'll Oh, Hex Maniac. So he can't. Hmm. Yeah, I'll Hex Maniac so he can't pull any shenanigans. And I'll. Be your vanish knockout. Yep. Okay. And so now, I'm pretty close to making the comeback, even though I made a kind of bad misplay. It's fine. Like, I still have enough stuff. I'm only doing 140, which is bad, but I can Lysander Shamans and do other stuff. I don't really- oh, Sleep Poison. Okay, he's gonna knock me out here. This puts me in a tricky spot. Because if he has a Lysander, he kills me. So that's kind of another reason why I wanted to retreat into this Vessel Queen attack, but then I would have had all my DCs out, which is bad. Okay, so I have, I believe, 13 Pokemon, 5, 6, 10, 13, 14, and I need to do 20 more damage, and I need to knock this out, because this is a threat right now. So I need a Muscle Band right here, or a way to knock out another Pokemon. Ooh, okay, I have no way to do 10 extra damage. Hmm. But oh, this is tricky. If he has a life center, I lose. Uh, but I need to, yeah. So I'll, I'll grab two VS stickers, I guess. Or VS sticker and a revitalizer. Looks like my special charge is a prize, so I, I do need some more energy in play. Uh, this is brutal. But my evil tall is beefy, which is good. So you can't actually oko it easily. So I'll oblivion. Uh, this is so tough. Okay. I'll just oblivion wing onto my onto my um Vespaquin. And I have floats under retreat it. And I have enough damage to knock out the septile out, so I'm just gonna hope he can't do enough damage. Uh, if he has another energy I lose. Anyways. I guess an ultra ball for for a servine. I mean I don't think that matters too much at this point. But, because I can AZ it, because I have the VS Seeker, right? Okay, so he's going to bank on this, I guess. Uh -huh. Poisonous Nest, yep. So, but he doesn't have the en energy. Yeah. So let's see if this goes heads, tails, sleep poison, heads, I fall asleep. That sucks, but I wake up. That's good. I'm gonna use a float stone retreat into Vespaquin. Attach another energy. Um hmm. Uh, 
I kind of want to do some things, something to like prevent any shenanigans from happening. But I c he needs like two things. He needs like a Lysander and an energy to win right here. So I think uh, just a B revenge is fine in this spot. I do enough damage, so I'm down to one prize. The misplay was kind of brutal, but I think it wasn't like it didn't matter that much. I have the muscle band that I need to do the dam enough damage. And I have a special charge. Kind of questionable promoting this knowing that I can't do enough damage to knock this out. So, is this just a scoop? Like, does he lose? This is GG. I think he made a misplay here. I don't think he should have promoted this. I think he should have promoted something else. But I see where he's like, if I, if I hit something, I need, it, I need to hit it now. So I'm going to be revenge. Knockout for the game. And so this is a... This deck is about playing your game. You want to slow down the game state, make it slow, use Oblivion Wing, use all your tools, use a Jardagon. And I think a few times he made questionable plays like not knocking me out or being a little bit too close, uh, like not knocking me out or not doing some things. And I'm in my pretty big misplay of uh, using Jardagon improperly. It, it was just, it was kind of weird because it's like I, it knocked at me out from poison, which it has to be knocked out from damage. So. That was a little oversight that I saw. That was my bad. But overall, this deck is really cool and really strong, and I think it's pretty good, and it was a great play for the World Championships. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys pretty soon with some more content, honestly.